Too bad we couldn't make that launch again. Never having a second chance is pretty hard to live with sometimes. As a quality control manager at Martin, it's hard for me to understand why some people don't realize that every item of a missile or space vehicle is of utmost importance. With all the tests we've made up to actual launch, you wonder how a failure could happen. Take the one you just saw. At liftoff, a stage one hydraulic line fitting failed. There was a loss of hydraulic pressure, the engine went hard over, the missile pitched and had to be destroyed. A fitting like this was the cause, a hidden defect somewhere, not up to specification. Someone let a substandard item get by. Oh, it passed the acceptance tests all right, but when the chips were down, it failed. A missile was destroyed. Our nation lost prestige, and the reputations of the Martin Company and your own company were damaged. I wish I could say that a spy had gotten into the test area and damaged this little fitting, but it wasn't a spy. It was one of you. If you're one of the 6,900 suppliers in this program, it was one of you. Oh, the failure may not have been all your fault. There were contributing factors. But it could just as easily have been the only cause for such a failure. All right, so this isn't your product. But is every single part you deliver perfect? You know for sure? Do you care, really care whether it's perfect or not? Are you willing to assure us of zero defects? Some time ago, we started a program in an effort to make every member of the Martin Aerospace team realize the importance of his job to the total program and to give us his personal pledge to do his assignment in as perfect a manner as possible. As a supplier, you are an important member of the Martin Aerospace team. Are you willing to pledge your company to a zero defects program? You know, we talk a lot about space age thinking, the kind of thinking that means zero defects. Maybe it's just lip service with some of you, I don't know. Maybe you talk space age when you're really in this age. The young lady's car is right out of the showroom, but she's going to have trouble any minute now. No, I don't mean with the boys. There's a defective connection in the electrical system. Hard to see, hidden, but it's shorting out. It's a new car, sure, but in the commercial industry, the product is the highest quality obtainable in relation to the economic factors involved and that may be considerably short of perfection. So in a sense, the manufacturer takes a calculated risk and agrees to repair or replace if something goes wrong. It's inconvenient for the girl, but being towed or pushed to the garage is about the size of it. This missile fell short of the target by a long distance. The mission was a failure. Cause? a short to ground of the positive coil lead of an actuator. Who gambled that his part might be good? Try to replace or repair that part. You see, in the aerospace industry, anything short of perfection is not acceptable, simply because it's a perfect product that's being bought and paid for. Now you may be thinking, well, with these missiles, you've got to take a calculated risk too. Some things are bound to happen once in a while. If you're a space age thinker, you just can't say that. We must not gamble on the quality of a missile, even though a failure is primarily a loss of time and money. But now, we must face the added requirements of space vehicles that are man-rated. We must assume the responsibility not only for the prestige of our nation as a world leader, but for the lives of our astronauts. In the near future, time and time again, you will be watching men take the long, high ride to the top of the giant you built. Of course, you didn't build it all, but you did build something. At this point, will you simply hope that your part is perfect? Will you bet that it's perfect? Or will you know damn well it's perfect? How will you feel that final moment that always comes? The moment of truth, they say, in bullfighting. 
This is the moment. Will this be the truth? Of course, that must never happen. And it will never happen if each one of you decides right now that zero defects is possible. Yes, right down to the packing case your part comes to us in. Zero defects is a challenge we're going to meet together. But never forget, you are the key to that quality. In the aerospace industry, we can accept only that concept of quality that assures perfection. This means that a product must be able to repeat performance tests enough times to assure a real margin of safety. This is reliability in its simplest form. Consistent performance repeatedly. How to get this required performance is embodied in the contract you signed. Let's go over some of the main ideas. Really look at it for once. No, not the legal stuff, but the basic specifications. When you signed that contract, you became a part of the Martin Aerospace team. The product you agreed to deliver has gone through all the necessary tests. And in your specification is the detail of that part. We are sure that if every part, every unit, every system is up to specification, we are sure that our product will perform exactly as planned every time. This is true because space technology has progressed to the point that if each item is produced in accordance with specifications, it will meet the reliability requirements and the launch will be successful. You know it's possible to make the part according to the specs, or Martin wouldn't have selected you, and you wouldn't have signed the contract. It's your responsibility to see to it that every part you deliver conforms with those specifications. All right, let's take a look at the contract. It requires you to have quality inspection at every stage of manufacture. Let's assume you do this honestly, thoroughly, effectively. Your inspectors are technically competent with a strong sense of responsibility. Pieces flow through. Inspect, select, or reject. Quality inspection must be thorough. But it isn't enough, is it? Because if there is even one reject at any point, there's a reason. Something or somebody is wrong. What? You have to know. Therefore, your contract requires you to make a failure analysis. Of course, if you're a space-age thinker, you don't need to be required to do this. You know you must do it. You know that inspect, reject, then replace or repair is treating symptoms. Like a doctor giving you a shot to relieve a reoccurring pain in your arm. Failure analysis is diagnosis. Like a doctor searching and finding the cause of your pain. Find the cause and treat it. And there will be no more symptoms. In the long run, that means more money in your pocket. It means you will achieve zero defects. After all, providing a good control over the quality of your product is just sound business practice. We inspect your product on delivery. If the part is rated critical, the inspection is 100%. If not in a critical application, we use an accepted statistical procedure. We have found that the overall rating here is about 10% rejection. For a man-rated space booster application, you'll admit that figure is too high by exactly 10%. Are you honestly taking your share of the responsibility? Could you say to us, you don't need to test my part, it's built exactly as specified. It will perform exactly as specified. And every part will do that. We would like to place that kind of confidence in you. Up to now, you haven't said that, or if you have, it just hasn't proved out. We don't make up rejections. We need the parts too badly to do that. You make the rejections. And as long as we have to sort good from bad like many of you do, we can never be absolutely sure, can we? Probably there is no machine in the world that goes through as many tests as a missile or a space booster. And that brings up a problem that only you as a supplier can solve. 
Many of you are acquainted with the vast pre-launch testing program. There's nothing in this fabulous giant that hasn't been tested. Parts tested, units tested, assemblies, components, subsystems and systems. Again and again. Everything is checked out perfect. All systems are go. T minus zero and ignition. Lift off and If not an explosion, perhaps a mission not accomplished. How is this possible? It's possible because there was a defect. You see, everything was accepted because it performed according to specifications in all the tests. The word to think about is performed. Acceptance tests and other functional tests can't tell us very much about how a particular part is constructed. Cannot tell us how long it will function cannot tell us when some hidden defect will cause a failure. For example, look at these diodes. They're in a critical application. Both of them look alike, and they both test out as up to specification. But inside, they're different. This is perfect. This is not. Why aren't they all like this? Or, take this transistor. Under every test we can give, the unit measures up to spec. Nevertheless, it is defective. The heat sink does not contact the shell. Therefore, the possible heat dissipation of the whole top surface is lost. Under vibration during a routine production environmental test, the staging relay located in the switching module of the Titan II autopilot failed when the current was applied. If this had happened in flight, it would have resulted in a shutdown of the inertial guidance system, and the flight would have been a failure. You know what caused this failure? A nylon spacer that had not been deburred. A condition such as this would cause the solenoid plunger to hang, and the contacts would not make, resulting in an open circuit when a closed circuit condition was demanded. These are some we caught. The point is that under regular functional testing, the units would have been accepted. Here is a relay that had contact chatter because somebody missed a few spot wells. If this part was in a missile destruct circuitry and the chatter occurred, the missile would have destroyed itself. Obviously, we can't destroy every part to see if it's constructed properly. Regardless of inspections, failure analysis, acceptance tests, and all the other functional tests, in spite of all this, the lives of our astronauts and the prestige of your country depend upon you producing a perfect part every time. It's outdated to think in terms of business as usual, getting by, calculated risk. And you know as well as I do that this attitude is entirely out of place in space age thinking. Ridiculous in terms of zero defects. Close to treasonous in terms of our nation's need to be first in space. Remember there's no second place just first and last. This room at Martin is surgically clean. The parts some of you produce, the ones used in a critical application, are put together here with other parts into units or components, sub-assemblies or assemblies, under perfect environmental conditions. It's your obligation to supply us with perfect products. It's our obligation to you and everyone to see that your perfect products are handled exactly as specified. Zero defects must not be just an ideal or a probability, even a possibility. Zero defects can and must be a fact. This is a sophisticated and powerful vehicle we have created. It's destined to lift the astronauts, and in a sense, each one of us, into space. 
how far and where we can only imagine. All of us who built this vehicle must be able to say, we know that we have made many perfect shots. Our problem is to make all of them perfect. We realize that there will be but one, only one moment of life for our creation. But that's all right. One chance is enough because we built it right. Everything about it is perfect. We don't need a second chance.